It is an extraordinary theater season in New York City. A nonprofit theater company well known for its popular and highly reputable summer theater productions of plays and musicals is making a big impact on stages in the city this season. The Williamstown Theater Festival in Williamstown, Massachusetts is in the bright spotlight right now in Manhattan. Joining me right now is Mandy Greenfield. She is the artistic director for the Williamstown Theater Festival. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Dana. Seven productions coming from Williamstown this year, six still to go. Uh, for those of us um, who haven't been or who don't know, tell us about Williamstown Theater Festival. Williamstown Theater Festival is a 65-year-old cultural organization that has kind of roots in two places, here in New York City and in Williamstown, Massachusetts, which is in the northwest corner. Berkshires uh, kind of thing? In the Berkshires. Uh, we do a summer season on the Williams College campus nice. um, in the 62 Center for Theater and Dance, a beautiful theater facility. We are the unbelievable beneficiaries of uh, Herbert Allen's generosity. Uh, he and the class of 62 funded the building of this remarkable facility, actually for Williams College, mm -hmm. with whom we partner. Uh, and we get to inhabit these glorious spaces. Uh, there are several theaters within the complex. We produce a seven-show season across two of them, the main stage, which is a beautiful sort of Broadway equivalent theater, yes. and what we call the Nikos, named for the founding artist director Nico Sakharopoulos, a <laughs> uh, 170 seat theater right next to it. One of the things that is, is so cool about the Williamstown Theater Festival is, is the people you get there. Um, big names, people who are just starting in the business. Tell us about that and why it is so attractive to playwrights and actors. It's a place where artists can really kind of get back to mm. basics in a way, right? And take big risk. There we are with Blythe Danner and Gwyneth Paltrow, uh, so deeply associated for many, many years in the early days, you know, to have the Mary Louise Parkers and Cynthia Nixons and Epatha Merkersons of the world trying on writers' words and ideas for the first time in front of live audiences with a kind of abandon. The consequence of failure is quite low and the consequence of success mm -hmm. is quite high, which is why we find ourselves talking about these seven shows. Let's now reveal what is still to come. Look at all of these shows, Mandy. Uh, these are opening on Broadway and on off Broadway right. uh, this season. It's, it's a really big deal, right? We do a seven show season in the summer and this year we have a seven show season in New York. It's thrilling because when artists give what they give to make this work up at the festival, they want this work to sort of connect in a deep and profound way, mm -hmm. right? They want it to find as wide and diverse an audience as it can. And so the idea that in some ways, you know, that effort in that willingness to take a big artistic risk pays off by the platform of Broadway and off-Broadway uh, is really, I think, gratifying for everyone who, who does it. Yeah, and these are staged here in the city by nonprofits as well. This isn't about money. Correct. Um, so the majority of our seven shows this season, uh, six of them were actually partnering with like-minded not-for-profit theaters and together holding hands to say, you know, we are the culture makers. Mm -hmm. One of the shows is in fact a commercial undertaking. The Sound Inside is playing at Studio 54 uh, under the auspices of an incredible commercial team who puts the art first. Mm -hmm. So uh, That's Mary Louise Parker. That's that Mary one. Louise Parker. That's right. What's that about? Oh my gosh. This okay. is a super Not intense piece. It's so <laughs> intense. Uh, Adam Rapp, who's one of our great playwrights, uh, directed by David Cromer. It's a piece uh, about a, a Yale professor, a Yale creative writing professor, and a very difficult moment she finds herself in personally, mm -hmm. and a relationship she forms unexpectedly, uh, surprisingly, in more ways than one with a student of hers, and kind of what happens between them. Also, uh, in October, we have The Rose Tattoo by Tennessee Williams, yes. and this is Marissa Tomei, and this, this is is Marissa Tomei. When did you get that tattoo put on your chest? I got it tonight. This is the lone revival of our pack this summer. The rest are world premiere new plays. Um, Marissa Tomei is at the height of her powers in this Tennessee Williams play, uh, directed by Trip Coleman, uh, a very close and frequent collaborator of mine and of the festivals. Uh, you know, Marissa was born to play Serafina in this play. It is uh, bringing out, uh, you know, just the depth and intensity and also brilliant comedic chops of this ah. great American actress. <laughs> What does it mean? Uh, it's 
the last thing I wanted to ask you about is uh, the Broadway and off-Broadway audiences. What do you say to them uh, to, to get bottoms in the seats, as they say? It's undeniably the case that there is still a kind of, you know, a voracious appetite for great theater that is wrestling with the ideas of our time. And when you fuse a, a great playwright's words and ideas to that appetite, magic happens. And so uh, it's been just thrilling to see how audiences respond and, and stand up at the end and all the good stuff. Oh, so. congratulations yeah. for the rest of the season. Mandy Greenfield, artistic director for the Williamstown Theater Festival, five years. Uh, wishing you all the luck. Thank you for being Thank here. Thank you, Dana. Thank you for having me. You are welcome. For more information about seeing these shows on Broadway or off-Broadway, head to our website, cbsnewyork.com.